There we go. Happy uh, last half hour of Sunday, January 29th, uh, Championship Sunday, if you're in the NFL. Uh, both of the teams that I picked won. I expected two blowouts. I got one. Uh, Philadelphia pretty much destroyed uh, San Francisco. But uh, in all honesty, the game was all pretty much over once the starting quarterback for San Francisco went out with an elbow injury. That ended up being like a nerve injury. He couldn't really grip the ball. He ended up coming back, and it was already um, – well, I need to shave. Um, the game was pretty much already over. I mean, it, they were, it, it, the starting quarterback for the 49ers was originally supposed to be the third-string quarterback, but the two previous guys in front of them got injured. So once he went down, it was fourth-stringer. And there was even a tweet from Steve Young saying, I'm out in the parking lot warming, warming up, let me know. That's how bad it got for them. So um, the KC game uh, I thought was going to be a blowout, and they ended up winning it on a field goal that was made easier by a stupid-ass penalty uh, at the end of the game. Uh, you know, unnecessary roughness, uh, roughness when he uh, the guy uh, lineman shoved Patrick Mahomes when he was clearly out of bounds. That changed it from a 55-yard field goal to a 43-yard field goal, and they got it. So there you go. It's Casey versus uh, Philadelphia. You can call it the uh, Kelsey Bowl because both Kelsey brothers will be looking for their second Super Bowl ring. Or you can call it the Andy Reid uh, 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 Employment Bowl because both teams uh, he took to the Super Bowl, one of them he won with. So uh, there you go. Uh, let's see who's in the chat. Right now I am uh, woo, taking my uh, allergy stuff. Uh, right before I went on the air, I had a large sneeze, almost blew my head up. I feel a lot better, though. Like I said, it's just mainly an irritating cough. I'm glad I'm not where I was seven days ago. Um, I am watching The Last of Us. I'm halfway in the middle of it. As soon as I'm done with this broadcast, I'm going to go watch the other half of it. So let me say hi to everybody. Go, go. Hey, listen, dude, you're the one who's streaming like one, two, three o'clock in the morning, man. I, I'm, I'm keeping it like normal. Yeah, it's a stream, and, and some of the titles of your stream, you know, I don't know if I should come in there or not because it looks like, it, like, let's end this. As I look, they sound grim. So you go to bed. This is my time of night. <laughs> How you doing, Larry? Alchemistro. Uh, also, post Royal Rumble weekend, hell of an event last night. Yeah, like I said, I um, I gave it a C. Not because it was a bad production, but because I, I, I just it was so easy to predict everything. But there were some good things that I did enjoy about the Royal Rumble. I don't know if I'm in the minority or not. I don't know how you guys feel. I really like Bray Wyatt. I really think that he has everything to to be a top of the card guy. He was a top of the card guy for a while. Then he got released, and I never understood that. I never understood how you could not make a place for what Bray Wyatt was doing. Now he's come back with a gimmick that I thought was kind of – when I first saw it, I'm like, okay, this is just a retread of what he – it's actually a lot more interesting. And the whole Alexa Bliss, and he was doing that before. Before he got cut, he was doing that. Remember when he was, she was going to set, you know, Randy Orton on fire and all that stuff? I mean, that was like – it was getting kind of weird, but it was kind of cool. So – and all these mystery, you know, rabbit people and stuff that he has around him. I actually would like to see him at the top of the card. Listen, Roman Reigns has had his time. And nothing against Roman Reigns, but it's just sometimes too much of something hurts that wrestler, even if it has nothing to do with them. But yeah, I would, um, I would like to see, uh, like I said, that blackout match that didn't go off perfectly, but it was something different. Uh, so I thought that was cool. Um, the women's match, the women's Royal Rumble, I thought was better than the men's Royal Rumble, even though the Logan, um, uh, Logan Paul colliding with um, Ricochet. That was cool. Uh, but other than that, it was pretty standard pair. And like I said, Cody coming in and winning it. I mean, everybody called that. And then Rhea Ripley winning it. I mean, a lot. Of, I know a lot of people who called that. And I'm like, when wrestling gets to that point, it, it takes a little bit of the fun out of it for me. I like to be served. But, you know, some of it's my fault because I've been watching it for so long that I've probably seen everything. So, who knows? But like I said, I gave it a C simply because of the predictability. Of it, but like I said, they they started some good storylines. Like I said, I really want to see. I don't want to say Bray Wyatt could be the next Undertaker because I don't think that's fair to him or the Undertaker. But I think he could be something metaphysical along those lines that could really give me something to watch when it comes to WWE. I think Alexa Bliss is one of the best female performers in the world. 
and not just WWE in the world. So them coming together and her doing her thing, um, I'm looking forward to that. The bloodline thing, it got a little bit interesting with Jey Uso walking away, but you know, it it's gone on so long. It's just, oh, all right. So, but yeah, it was a it was a pretty good. How are you doing, Chappie? Yeah, I've already I've started watching uh, the Last of Us. Like I said, I got halfway through it. The only thing I didn't like about this episode so far is usually. The last two episodes started out with some creepy, you know, premise. You know, like, you know, the first one started out with the, uh, uh, the first one started out with the, the two guys sitting on the TV show. And then the second one had the doctor at the beginning of the whole thing. So I was kind of looking for something like that. But like I said, I'm not through the episode yet. So there may be something there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There, there were some issues there. There were some issues. Even with the um, 49ers, with everything stacked against them, losing a the quarterback in, 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 in Philadelphia, playing against you know one of the top defenses, some of those calls were bullshit. It hasn't been a good uh, uh, weekend for uh, referees of sports in general. Uh, watching the Eagles game today, and then my Lakers getting totally screwed in Boston last night. And having the NBA ref uh, union come out and just admit it, say, hey, we fucked up. We don't get that game back, though. And it wasn't just one call with, when it comes to LeBron James. If it was just one call, I wouldn't care. This has been a whole year. And they've sent in evidence, like they said. It is really a – I know officiating is a human thing and a, a human error. But when it's this bad, when you're talking about the, uh, the NFC Championship game, you're not talking about just any rep. Once you get down to less games and less teams, it's supposed to be the best of the best officiating this game. I didn't see that today in the Philadelphia game. I did just I just didn't see it. So yeah. Um fix that shit. All right. Hi, how, how you doing, Hal Jordan? All right, let's see. Last of us was great. Chappy, how you doing, music man? Yeah, why, 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 yeah, like I said, and he's got everything you need. He's got everything that the WWE likes to have in it. He's got a pedigree, son of uh, the great Mike Rotunda. He's the grandson of uh, Black Jack Mulligan. He's the nephew of Barry Wynn. I mean, he's got wrestling in his blood, and like I said, he is a believable. He doesn't have the, the physique and all that, but it doesn't matter. He, he's, got, he's got that aura about him, and it's kind of cool. And like I said, I thought his first time around was kind of cool. And he came – out of nowhere with a gimmick. Everybody was, was was doing the whole cell phone thing in the arena when he come in with the lantern. And he's stuck. I'm glad to see he's stuck with that. But I think Bray Wyatt, and I'm hoping that this is the beginning of him just being that guy because I really enjoy watching him. And when he was a free agent, I was wondering if he was going to sign somewhere else uh, that could really utilize him. But if he was going to come back to the WWE, at least now they're doing something with him. And even though I don't like them kind of sacrificing a match, I would have liked to have seen Bliss take it off of uh, Bianca Belair because I'm she just really doesn't do anything for me as a, as a champion. Not nothing against her personally; it's just a situation. Um, I would have loved to see her take the title, but at the end of that match, you saw where they were going with her. So they were they were using the pay per view to do a long term story time. I'm not on board with that all the time, but in this in this particular situation, I really like where this is going. I would much rather see that at the top of the card. Um, you know, than uh, the Roman Reigns, you know, nothing against him. And it's just like John Cena. People like hate John Cena. John Cena didn't overbook himself. They just kept shoving him down your throat. And I think that hurt his brand. And I think anytime you have a wrestler where you continually go back to the well after that, you know, it, it's not on them. They're not booking. Most of them are not booking their own matches. So yeah, I would like to see Bray Wyatt at the top. I wouldn't mind seeing a Bray Wyatt. Um, uh, WrestleMania uh, 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 main event. I know that's not where we're getting, but you know, SummerSlam. I'm hoping by SummerSlam, Bray Wyatt is at the top of the card because then I could stop DVRing through WWE. So there you go. The aftermath of the Bray match was the worst. Um, are you talking about the whole jumping off of the uh, jumping off um all of the thing you know with, to, on on the LA night? The match itself was a garbage match. It's all a match was was to showcase him, you know. So an LA night was just basically there. I mean, it could have been anybody. There was nothing special about the match. It to me, and the match itself was kind of 
it just didn't go off. I don't think that's the effect that they were wanting. But once again, they're doing more with Bray Wyatt than they are with anybody else. So, um, but as far as the aftermath, I didn't think the aftermath was too bad. I mean, I've seen worse. The aftermath of, uh, like I said, the aftermath of the uh, Roman Reigns match, KO, yeah, it was spectacular. Yeah, it was cool. But Mondo, you've been watching wrestling for decades. Did you not call that from 5,000 miles away? And is that is that okay? I mean, if it is, it is, you know? All right, not much. I uh, fan, but I dug the high contact match, even if it's a bit cheesy with all the Mountain Dew. Yeah, and the whole – I was waiting for what's, her, what's Jay Uso or what's the Uso's wife that, that – um, she was a former champ. Naomi coming out with the glow and all that. That's I was waiting for her to come out in the match. That that was really, really kind of kind of um yeah. I just I don't think that's what they were meaning for. But like I said, if you're gonna if I'm gonna criticize WWE for just being standard prayer, then I can't criticize them when they at least try something, you know, you know. Uh, yeah, women's was better. I thought the in my opinion. I, I had a buddy today I disagreed with today. He's like, no, that was the best of Royal Rumble in a long time. I'm like, all right, I, we all got different standards. I have never well, okay. What am I wrong about, Monda? What part am I wrong about? I like I said, judging it by today's WWE, not talking about like 95 to 98 WWE today. What am I specify? You, you can't throw that out there. I know it's something not. Eat my tacos. Hey, William, big fan of Lucha Libre. I wonder why we never, uh, they never use Sin Cara right. I really, how many Lucha Libre, uh, Libre stars do they use right? I mean, AEW does it better, but, um, I, it's, I don't, it's, that, that's across the board. All right, Chris, I'm so not a fan. Uh, how long is the stream going to be today? Um, not too long. It's a Midnight Express one, so, it's gone on for 15 minutes, probably about eight, at most another half hour because I still got to watch Last of Us and I still got to uh, work on some stuff um, for the store. And um, I'm working on a uh, trauma promotion. We're bringing Lloyd Kaufman out. Uh, so I got to work on that promo. Uh, we're actually hosting a wrestling event at at my plaza soon. So I got to work out some stuff there. So, yeah, I got a lot of like email sending and delayed email sending to do so. Uh, plus, I want to just sit back and relax. So uh, I'd say about another 30 minutes or so. DC Slate tomorrow. Um, I'm hearing tomorrow or Tuesday. Uh, I heard initially tomorrow was going to be a press event, and then Tuesday it was going to be for us, which I think is a mistake. But, you know, let them do what they're going to do. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised to wake up tomorrow and have something. I just want to get it out there so I can decide, hey, you know, is this going to interest me or not? All right. Let's see. Let's see my fan. Exactly, the match sucked. The aftermath was terrible. Um, it, if you're talking about execution, yeah, it was. It, yeah, okay, I'll agree there. The whole thing was just not executed well. But my biggest issue with WWE is it's either been really bad booking, or half-ass lazy booking. Or just the same thing over and over again, and like I said, like now it's it, 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 half of half of Royal Rumble was predictable. This the Bray Wyatt thing was the only thing that was like you know not predictable. You, poorly executed, okay, yeah. Especially for a, a company that has that much production value and has that much resources, yeah. The effort and where it's going is where I'm I'm, I'm talking about. But yeah, if you want to go execution, I was watching the match. I'm like, why are we doing day glow? And it's, this is kind of silly. But you know, like I said, where's Naomi? William, what do you think about the briefcase in Pulp Fiction? Uh, I don't know. Not my favorite Tarantino movie, to be honest with you. And I've only seen it the one time. I've seen different scenes of it. I never got the whole Pulp Fiction thing. And I like Tarantino. But that movie, and he won an Oscar for that. He won an Oscar for Best Screenplay for that. But um, I don't know. Uh, I haven't. Um, I think that might be my least favorite Tarantino movie. Sorry. Favorite one being uh, Django. Oops, hold on, Mr. Mato. I have thoughts. Uh, predictable is okay as long as it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but damn, dude. I mean, that's uh, 
you can make sense and be unpredictable. You can make sense and be creative. That's been their problem. It's like, yeah, it makes sense, but you you could you could you know use be imaginative and and and, and it still makes sense. I mean, you know, I don't know. I hate forgetting things. Yeah, it happens. Uh, William, you were going to ask, um, oh yeah, you were going to ask William if Bateman really did, uh, the murders or not. I looked up the rules of attraction. I can't believe I never knew about it. Uh, we're going to have to go, uh, we're going to go on the serial killer route tonight. If you need, okay. If you need an appointment for your wrestling show, uh, let me know. I'll help you get your affairs in order before I listen, dude. First of all, if it's you, I've already told you ahead of time. I'm cheating. You're not getting any of my belts, right? You're not getting in my cash. And if the belts are on the line, I'm definitely going to be cheating. First of all, it's going to be no disqualification. And I get to choose the ref who's going to be on my side with the chair. So, yeah. All right, for local wrestling heads and multiverse fans, uh, uh, what's this? You're not putting porn or anything in here, are you, Alchemistro? Just kidding. Would um, what's this to wrestling facing words? Ah, it's it's wrestling, so I'll allow it. I was gonna say words, yeah. That's when I saw the Dayglo thing. I'm like, uh, just do a coffin match, even though that's predictable. It's it's along the lines. Um, and I, oh, by the way, I thought the thing with the other night when um, the 30th anniversary were, were uh, him and Undertaker came cross path, I thought was cool. I thought they could have did a little bit more with it. And, uh, you know, instead of him whispering something into his ear, I thought he could have like tipped his hat or something like that, you know, something, you know, but uh, like I said, the execution with Bray Wyatt hasn't been the best, but I, I think it can get better. There's a huge upside to that story. That's all I'm saying. You know what? Um, American Psycho. That's that's another movie I'm in a far minority with. I don't not my not a favorite of mine. Um, I and I'm a serial killer movie fan. I just never really. And there was a horrible sequel to it, by the way, too. But yeah, I saw them. I saw that in the movies, and I was like, all right. It wasn't horrible. Don't get, I'm not a hater. I just, amongst those type of movies, it just didn't grab me the way some of them were. Well, Andre the, will Andre the Giant in his prime have a career in modern wrestling? Yeah. Yeah. Also, if you look at some of the older stuff uh, before the pre-WWE stuff or WWF stuff, Andre the Giant was quite the athlete. Andre the Giant could actually, and Mondo's in the chat, and he actually turned me on to a match with Stan Hansen in 1981, it was Stan Hansen and Andre the Giant. And the, the moves and the way Andre the Giant was able to move around that ring and articulate was unrecognizable to the Andre the Giant that you saw in the mid-80s and the late 80s. It got to the point during a four-year period where like, it, there was a tag team championship match where Andre the Giant and Haku versus the Demolition at WrestleMania. It was – he was in such bad mobility – he never got tagged in the match. They just basically double teamed Haku and won the titles. That's how he deteriorated. And he wasn't that old. Andre the Giant wasn't a very old. Uh, I think he was what 43, 40. When, when how, how old was Andre? Andre the Giant died. Um, oops, oops. I think he was in his 40s when he died. I mean, he was not um he was not very old. He was 46. Wow. He died um, 30 years ago, two days ago. Today is the 29th. He died January 27, 1993. Uh, yeah, so he was 46 years old. That's hell. You see guys like Bobby Lashley and all that, you know, wrestling now that are older than that. And Triple H wrestled until he was 100. But, yeah, I if, judging from what I saw, some of the archive matches, if you look up in New Japan and, and some of the stuff he did. Andre the Giant was a tremendous athlete before he physically deteriorated uh, because of the height and weight and issues, health issues. So, yeah, I think he would have a career. Let's see. No way. 
yes way uh spider-man 72 85 and in perfect knowing there will be no snyderverse what do you ideally uh want what ideally in the slate in other words uh what's your wish list uh first and foremost as a resolution to the to everything we've been through uh that's the first thing because i think if you if you end disorganized and sloppy and fragmented, that's how you start. You're literally trying to create a paradise in the same fragmented shit that you're standing in. So a resolution, whatever it is, it doesn't need to be a big movie, some type of resolution, kingdom come, do whatever you want to resolve these actors and all that. Two, um, something uh, big. Um, I don't want to see any low budget bullshit. I don't think they'll, they're going to be allowed to do low budget. So if you're going to do Superman, I want to see Superman um, basing something I've never seen before. Um, he's already done the Crypto Kryptonians in two different generations, uh, Lex Luthor in 18 million generations. I want to see a cosmic level um, adventure. You know, so um, I want to see Superman going up against a Brainiac. I want to see the Green Lanterns. You know, and I want to see, um, you know, what my main thing is I want to see something different than, uh, especially something different than what Marvel's putting out. All right. When I when I want to see what Marvel puts out, I'll pay for a Marvel movie. But if I see that there's he's mimicking Marvel in any way, shape, or form, then I'm going to be turned off. Because, like I said, I don't pay for a DC movie to get a Marvel copy. So I want him to, I want, I want to see... Superman, Green Lantern. I want to see the the major major guys, but I want to see them in larger than life stories. Where you go from there, I'm okay. But I want I want to see. I said last night, if, if you're going to take away what I've had and never you never wrapped up, you're going to have to give me something much larger, much bigger. So I want it to be big. I want it to involve you know the main the main characters, and I want to see finally the Green Lanterns done right. So. Um, hopefully that's what he, he lays the groundwork for. Just a fun group of discussing wrestling and geek fandom interconnect. Oh, wow. I will be joining that group. <laughs> as soon as I'm done here, I don't want to click on it on right now, but, um, I will, uh, when I, when I rewatch it, I'm going, I'm going to, that's, that's my, that's, that's me. You literally have a group that is, that is me. So I'll be there. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what James Gunn and Peter Safran do. You say yeah, yeah, it is. And like I said, the main thing is I'm keeping my mind open to to liking what he's doing. I have to put aside the way things have been handled because even even WBD currently has rolled this out in a very stupid way. That doesn't mean that he can't present me with something I like. I will continue to. I think his odds are forty sixty, but that could change in forty eight hours. I mean, that could change within a tweet. But like I said, the ball's in their court. You know, you know, blow me away, you know. And that's another thing. My my wish list is to be like blown away to the point where what he presents these next 48 hours is so big, there's no room to discuss anything else. That's what our that's the level I think he should be doing, or at least you know, getting us to the point of how you doing, Diggs? William, what was your first reaction watching Batman begins when it was coming out today? I was bored. Um, I had, I was home on deployment. Um, I was home on R and R. It was a June two thousand five is when I I was home on R and R from uh, my deployment overseas, and I was bored. Um, I didn't like the interpretation of Ra's al Ghul, even though I love Liam Neeson. I'm not the hugest fan of Ben uh, of uh, Kristen Bale. Um, I thought the enemy was creative and interesting. But I thought the pace of um, of uh, Batman Begins was slow. Um, it took me places with Batman uh, mythos that I didn't care about. You know what? And I didn't. I didn't think it just did it. I didn't, it, I didn't think it did it in the most artful way. To be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of the, the Nolan trilogy. I'm a big fan of the parts of the Nolan trilogy where Heath Ledger is on the screen. But if, but the Nolan trilogy didn't. I think is overrated. I, I know it's full of great Academy Award winners, but for me, as a as a as a lifelong Batman fan, I I just wasn't a fan of that interpretation of Batman. The voice drove me crazy, um, and I thought that the you know the third act, I thought the Dark Knight Rises wasn't a very good movie. You know, and I you know it it it, it gets a lot of credit because it came off the heels of, of one of the great single performances of all time, but. 
when it comes to the, the Nolan trilogy, it's one Heath Ledger legendary performance away from being an average series that makes five, six hundred million a movie, which was good money for what they spent, but it, it's 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 not my level, it's not my skill of Batman. So yeah, when I first saw it for the first time, I was I was bored. Sorry. <laughs> All right, man, you too. Like I said, I got another uh, another maybe 16, 17 minutes of this one. Uh, sorry about your Niners, but that was a tough break. I, that game was – not only were you dealing with the refs, but you're also dealing with your, your quarterback getting hit. That's just bad. That's the wrong team to not have the best you can put out there. So, But you know what? You did what you could. I mean, to make it this far with a third-string quarterback and then have to put it in your fourth-string quarterback, that's, that's just a tough break. So, all right, man, I'll talk to you later. All right, uh, definitely check it out. <laughs> how do you feel about Dexter? I always liked it, but I know how everyone who likes serial killer stories like I love Dexter. I even liked this last reiteration of it, the New Blood, until that fucking ending. Dexter New Blood has one of the worst endings of any television series. They spent all this time giving the fans credit for being smart and being able to pick up things. And then the last episode and a half of Dexter new blood, they basically think we're a bunch of morons. I'm not going to spoil it for people who want to watch it, but it was stupid. It was like really stupid. Um, It was not fitting for what Dexter meant to us. So both endings of the show were bad. The ending of the original one sucked, and the um, the new blood sucked. But the show itself, as a whole, was one of the greatest television accomplishments, uh, you know, my lifetime. Season two of Dexter is amazing. It kept me on the edge of my seat every single episode. Season four of Dexter with John Lithgow as a Trinity killer might be one of my favorite serial killer performances, movie or television, period, across the board. You must watch it. It is a mind fuck and it is great. So that's how I feel about Dexter. Speaking of Andre the Giant, uh I was at a live Friday main event that night when they stopped the match to announce that he had just passed and uh there was a moment of silence. Yeah. <coughs> Um, unfortunately, the only unfortunate thing about under the giant, he didn't live very long. Um, he was in poor health and poor mobility during the later years of his life. And a lot of people only know Andre the giant through, um, through WWF. Um, this man was an amazing athlete who began wrestling in the sixties and had a full on career, uh, before you even saw him. By the time you saw him in WWF, he had already started to decline health wise. You know, WrestleMania 3, you look at WrestleMania 3, that was Hogan doing carrying that match. Andre couldn't. But Andre was such a spectacle, the eighth wonder of the world, that it was a big deal. Even though WrestleMania 3, the best match on the card was Ricky Steamboat and Randy Savage. But... And so, yeah. I always um, look at, I have fond memories of Andre the Giant. I just, I just, uh, it's just sad that he, he um, wasn't around. You know, didn't get to live a long life, but a lot of guys, he, he he came down with health ailments that a lot of guys, his height and weight do. You know, especially if they were growing up in era, you know, era, you know eras where there wasn't the modern science and treatments that you have now to help people. You mean you won't see the eighty seventh iteration of Superman fighting Zod? No, nah, but you know what? The, the both I I liked I loved both iterations of it though. Terrence Stamp and Zod, you know, Neil before Zod was great. Michael Shannon, people don't give Michael Shannon enough credit for his, his I love his Zod. I empathize with his, with his Zod. At the end of that movie, when he says, um, you, you, we could have had a paradise in this squalor, but you chose humans over us, and he, he explains what he is and why he is. You may think I'm evil, but everything I did was protection of my people. And then when he, when he lifts up the dust with you know the, the burnt ship, and said, now I have no people. You've taken away my soul, and it's you know, I, I empathize with it because the guy just lost his entire civilization. But no, I don't need to see another Zod. Uh, we run wrestling game. Uh, Sam was in. Wow, dude. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Definitely want to see a good uh, GLA. Yeah, I really do. I want, I mean, yeah. That to me is critical. 
Because through the Green Lantern Corps, you can tell a lot of different DC stories on all levels. I think I'm going to feel the same about the Dark Knight trilogy. I need to watch them. Uh, yeah, I, you go right ahead. <laughs> uh, Rises was really bad after the police chase. It was not. Well, the police chase, the whole bomb, I mean, the cops, uh, it's the, everything about it just made no sense to me. I, actually, I liked the new season, but the end wasn't great. Yeah, the end was fucking horrible. Uh, I'm addicted to. Uh, I'm addicted to like the real world documentaries of serial killers all over Netflix. Crazy stuff. So am I. You're not alone. Uh, crazy stuff to learn about and examine. Yes, yes, we had. A, I don't know. Uh, a couple of streams ago, I don't know what the hell happened, but we. I opened up the. the uh, we were doing an advertising for our our um, Jack the Ripper Project Ripper reenactment. So I had one of our commercials open up the show, and that show was not supposed to be about serial killers, but we talked uh, 90 minutes of serial killers. Yeah, so you may enjoy that scream, and every now and then it shit happens. Yeah, Trinity Killer was 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 he won an Emmy for that, and he deserved it. Um, seven, seven phone collector is good. Angeline Jolie and um, Denzel Washington, but seven was on a different level. Seven, seven was just not just the 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 one killer. Everybody in seven was uh was 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 an epic. That was an epic performance. Um, and especially for Kevin Spacey, even though know, you know, yes, I know what he's guilty of or he's alleged of, but he was great in seven. Princess Bride, Andre the Giant. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't only knew him from them too. I mean. Andre the Giant was a legend. Like I said, at 46 years old, I, I think of that now. But I think of what he looked like and he was physically going through at that time. It was like, damn, dude. All right, I respect you, William. Christian Bell was my Batman when I was going on. And that's fine. <clears throat> We're all going to have that Batman that strikes us in a different way. I just didn't – the movie in general – Okay, so a lot of people are going to hate me because I, I know people will want to just outright hate the Batman. The Batman is the bat, best Batman movie. Robert Pattinson may not be the best Batman. I'm not nowhere near. But that movie overall, to me, is the real greediness that Nolan's Batman was attempting to do but overdid it in the realness. The Gotham and the surrounding and everything that's in the Dark Knight is is perfectly balanced and perfectly done. And not only is it perfectly done, it is done in the vein of the comic. If you read Batman or if you read Batman at any point in the last 15, 20, 30 years, especially if you go back to the mid 80s, that is Batman. Gotham being a one of the extra what is Gotham in the Batman was a character. You know what? Uh, uh, the people, it was grounded. I the Batman, we could have all been in the Batman. Any one of us could have been the Riddler. Any one of us could have been... No one... That was the case, too, but I think Reeves did it better. I, I, I think the Batman, the one Batman movie was better, excluding Heath Ledger's performance. But if you judge it... If I get three Reeves movies, to me, the, right now, just the one Reeves movie is superior to the Nolan films with the exception of Heath Ledger's performance. So that, that's how I feel about that. But everybody's going to be different, you know? I'm sorry, William, but the Dark Knight trilogy is one of the best movie trilogies of all. No, it's not. I, that's your opinion. You're not wrong. I think it's one of the most overrated trilogies of all time. All right? Especially for a superhero, you know, a trilogy, especially in this day and era. No, I, I think it is overrated. I think that it is, it is put on a pedestal for some reason. Like I said, even the Dark Knight, as much as I, I sort of enjoyed The Dark Knight, I realized I, I enjoyed Heath Ledger. You know what? That's, that's what I enjoyed about The Dark Knight. But no, I think The Dark Knight is an overrated trilogy. Sorry, that's just me. That, but it's all subjective. What's up? Hello, well, Bell. Another William stream. Yeah, for another 10, 15 minutes or so. All right, Rational Skeptic, the Bone Collector is a guilty pleasure for me, but Seven. Yeah, Bone Collector is not bad. It's actually a pretty kick-ass movie, but it's, Seven is like one of the, like the Mount, one of the, I don't know, Mount Rushmore of serial killer movies, but it's it's in that discussion. Bone Collector is a really good movie. Yeah. Uh, of, of, of the Bone Collector, and that's what he was called, dude. Uh, Andre is also Conan the Destroyer and Bionic Man. Is he in Conan the Destroyer? I thought Will Chamberlain was in. Was he in one? I know Will Chamberlain was in Conan the Destroyer. Was horrible, 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 
horrible movie, but boy, is it fun. That's one of those things you just watch and you just say, fuck it. This sucks, but it's cool. Oh, wow, dude. He was a... All right, let's uh 1967. I don't I can't even pronounce this because it's French because that team, you know, he he got his start. Six million dollar man. That's big. He played Bigfoot. Uh so P, BJ and the Bear. Oh, I grew up with BJ BJ K and my best friend Bear. Uh, he just drove around in the truck with a monkey. Fall guy, killer typhoon. Less brilliant, the greatest American. Oh, greatest American hero. He was in that. Believe it or not, I'm flying. He sure as hell was. He was uncredited. Dog off. Conan the Destroyer was a absolutely fucking abysmal movie. It was horrible. But it, like I said, I'll watch it today. I just knowing how bad Conan the Destroyer was, I'll slap. I got the VHS at the store. I'll slap that in the VHR. We'll watch Conan the Destroyer. And I fully knowing it's an awful movie, but hey. The Batman is accurate. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just get the feel of the Batman that I don't get with uh, other Batman movies. I still think Ben Affleck is the best Batman, but he has not been in his own movie. So when he's in his own movie, I oh, that's another thing. I hope gets released tomorrow in these next couple of days that Ben Affleck is going to be associated with a Batman movie. Oh, that would be great. Um, but yeah, Ben Affleck hasn't been in his own Batman movie, but he's still my favorite overall Batman because he represents the Dark Knight Batman. The uh, Dark Knight uh, Returns, Frank Miller Batman. Mary Wilcox, hot take, William, but I love the Batman. I did, I did a lot. I took a lot of risk and gave me something. I love you know. To me, I don't think it's a hot take. I know a lot of people. Listen, I know a lot of people who got screwed uh, with, with with Ben Affleck. By the way, we, we may. We may just have to be a little bit more patient to get our Batman, Batfleck thing. But I know a lot of people wanted to hate the Batman symbol because of we were settling again. The only reason we got the Batman is because we didn't get Ben Affleck's Batman. That's the only, it, it, you know, that was that was what we were supposed to get, and then Ben Affleck stepped away. So I know a lot of people, and let's say people don't underestimate the uh, vitriol that comes from having to settle. DC fans have constantly had to settle. We got all these B and C characters the last five years because we were settling. We couldn't get our A-list characters because the fuck buffoons that were running the company before didn't want to touch them because they had fucked everything up. So we had to settle for B-listers. You know, we got a guy in a cape with a symbol on his chest, but it wasn't Superman. We were constantly having to settle. And a lot of people felt like, even though the Batman, I, like I, you know how I feel about the Batman, it wasn't the Batman we were supposed to get. So a lot of people were turned off then. But on its own, separated and detached from all that other bullshit, Batman's the best overall Batman movie. It just, it just is. Uh, Rational, oh, oops, hold on. Rational, sorry. William, do you remember the film uh, Clue where each theater uh, showing at a different ending? Yeah. we. I have a cast that does Rocky Horror, and we've done Clue. And it was, it was mind-blowing. But yeah. Yeah, and then there's some theaters that showed all the endings. You you could, you could have, in L, I think in LA you could see all the endings. I agree with one of the Batman is better than the trilogy as a whole. Yeah, to me it's no doubt. All right, me as a man, same here. The building a piece of me making. Yeah, in the opening of the Batman is is, is the best opening of uh, any Batman movie. Uh, Dark Knight is overrated. I, I believe so. Heath Ledger made the Dark Knight perfect. Yeah, Heath Ledger's Heath Ledger's um. Joker is is to the uh, to the Dark Knight what Anthony Hopkins' performance as Hannibal Lecter is to uh, to uh, Silence of the Lambs. All right, Anthony his seventeen minutes and Silence of the Lambs is a great film, one of the greatest serial killer movies of all time. Jonathan Demme, rest in peace. What best director? It won best movie. Jodie Foster is one of the greatest actors of several generations. She was great. Everybody was great. It got what it deserved. But if Anthony Hawkins doesn't perform that iconic role, not a lot of people put that down. That was the one thing that was just so different about that movie. Everything else was standard fare, but it was done at such a high level. Jodie Foster's character, Jonathan Demme's direction, the movie itself was the best movie of that year. 
But it was Anthony Hopkins' performance as Hannibal Lecter, 17 minutes on screen. That is what carried that movie and put it where it is in lore. And the same thing with Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger is not in every minute of The Dark Knight, but he's, he's, you, you feel his presence. The movie is about him. It, it revolves around him. And without him, like I said, you take Heath Ledger's performance out of The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight, uh, the Dark Knight, um, Batman Begins is, is it's already what a five hundred million dollar movie? It's all right, but it wasn't great. You're talking roughly around that much, and in, in, in uh in the Dark Knight, and then the Dark Knight uh, Rises probably makes less. But because of that epic once in a lifetime performance that Heath Ledger puts out, that Academy Award winning performance, one of only two men to win that award posthumously, pos- posthumously. I can't I can't talk today. Um. The other one being Penny French for a network, both of them Australians, by the way, who died before they were able to get their award. Um, that's that's an epic, that's an epic performance. But yeah, he he makes that series. So, all right, that's honestly how I feel about the Suicide Squad. Good movie, but very overrated, um, especially compared to Zack Snyder's Justice League. I thought the Suicide Squad was really good, and to me, it's one of those things that showed me James Gunn can tell any story you ask him to. I know the dick jokes and the fart jokes and the poop jokes are out there, but that's what he's been asked to do, and that's what he's done. But if you look at the Suicide Squad, and if you look at Peacemaker, you can clearly see that that guy has the tools to tell a story. And if he's given a mandate to tell this story, if he's telling a Superman story, I think he can raise rise to the level of putting on something epic. Um but the Suicide Squad wasn't overrated because it lost money. It lost Warner Brothers a ton of money. I know we promoted the hell out of that movie, and it lost, it lost like $50, 60000000 million. So I think it's overrated amongst film pundits when it's compared to Zack Snyder stuff. But I, I, I thought it was a really good movie on its own. I see. Yeah, you could say that. I thought the whole I, I felt Batman year two, so, but that's but like I said, we're all gonna uh we're all gonna go. Spider Verse is a better trilogy than D- yeah. I mean that's easy. I mean, uh probably one of the best uh, trilogies around uh recent bias uh, has taken account. Yeah, because um a lot of people didn't give Snyder's work a chance. They were shitting on it before it even came off the presses, so Eat my tacos. Batman is going to be fine. I don't think so. I know a lot of rumors are out there, but Matt Reeves designed that character specifically not to to be part of the inner workings of any fantastical universe, and I think it should stay that way. I don't want him to change his Batman to fit a universe that has Green Lanterns and and aliens flying around. Uh, I want a Batman created that does that. That's just like in the comics. When you read Detective Comics or Batman or uh, any Black Label Batman, those storylines are Batman centric and they need nothing else in a, they would be harmed by having something else in there. When you read justice league or world's finest, it's written differently. That's a different, yeah, it's Bruce Wayne. It is Batman, but it's written differently. The environment is different. And I really don't want them to change the Batman just to fit him into a, or build a fantastical universe around him. when that character is not designed for it. I hope we never get another Hannibal movie because let's face it, Sir Anthony Copson is, is Hannibal Lecter. Um, he's the most notable Hannibal Lecter, but I think Brian Cox, if you go watch Manchester, he played Hannibal Lecter in a movie before Hannibal, before um, Anthony Hopkins did. He does an excellent job. I think that, um, what's that guy, Miles Mick- the Mickelson, the dude who played, um, um, the dude who played, uh, you know, played him in uh, Hannibal. The the TV show has done it, did a brilliant job. So I don't know. I, I think I think you could Hannibal. I think I think you could. That's a character that, if depending on what the performance is, could be done over. I'm definitely hoping that we see Green Lantern Corps in the DC slate. It's been too long since we had a Green Lantern. Yes, we do. And like I said, the Green Lantern Corps, especially if he's going to be telling these stories all using all kinds of medium, the Green Lantern core is like a thread that can be in every medium and not necessarily be one character. So I really hope uh, one of my, all, all my wish lists is that he uses the Green Lantern core, you know, in, in, as a tool to, to tell different stories. 
Well, it must be honest to ourselves after the Reeve trilogy, Patterson will be the DC, DCU Batman. I don't think so. It all makes sense why they want a younger Superman in the Batman novelization. Superman is mentioned. Uh, there's a difference between being mentioned and actually being in something. All right. Uh, you can acknowledge that um, those things exist, but there's a difference between saying something and implying something and actually making it appearance. Seeing that there's a Superman on an article somewhere in a newsstand and actually having Superman fly into your world are two dramatically different things. And Matt Reeves has said that he did not want that. His character is not designed for that. And it would be kind of, I don't think it would fit, to be honest with you. Uh, they can get a younger anybody. It doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, by the time Pat, Pat Pattinson's 33, 34 now. The, by the time the Batman 2 comes out, he'll be closing in on 40. So we're not talking young there either. So um, it makes no sense that they would do that. Only only because people, you know, are kind of putting that together. But no, the Batman needs to stay its own thing and create a Batman. Because if you try to pigeon-toe Robert Pattinson's Batman into a Superman movie with Green Lantern and Wonder Woman, it takes away what makes the Batman special. It takes away what makes Detective Comics special and versus when you see Batman in the Justice League. It's just two different forms of writing. And cinematically, you do not have a lot of time to make those, um, to distinguish that properly. So no, let's not do that. Posthumously, yeah, I, I, it's, late, it's late. I know these words. I Believe it or not, people, I can actually, I'm pretty articulate. And sometimes when I start rolling, I, I start losing it. Uh, let's see. How you doing, Albaster? Uh, Rational Skeptics with Metropolis is mentioned. But yeah, it's just like everybody says, well, Miles Morales is definitely going to be in the MCU because, because his uncle's in there. And he said he mentioned that he had a, he had a nephew. And I'm like, are, do we only have single cells in our skulls? Is that how fucking elementary we are? That doesn't mean shit. If Sony says, no, we don't want Miles Morales in that universe, do we want to make all the money, then I don't care if he pulls out a fucking picture of his nephew and says, here he is. Sony has the final say-so in that. I don't think that should ever happen. But just because something is mentioned and implied, there's been a ton of stuff that's been men and mentioned and implied throughout the decades uh, about, about things, you know, other characters and all that, and it never happened. So mentioning something and it being referenced to is a thousand miles away from it actually happening. It may never happen and more than likely would never happen. Uh, could it happen? I mean, like I said, James Gunn is a weird guy that way. Uh, I think that would be a huge mistake. And I think that would I, I don't I don't think Matt Reeves would go for it, to be honest with you. I think Matt Reeves would walk before that happened. That's just me. All right. So Mary Cox Superman is also mentioned in one of the newspapers. So so it's like, yeah, he can mention those things can be in there that world. Doesn't mean they'll ever be part of that story. That's just a reference, you know. So how's it going? That's yeah, going all right. The jumper, I have a strange feeling that Gunn hasn't released the slate because David or maybe some executives wanted him to change him. That's that's going to happen no matter what. I I, I am 100% sure that he's presented this, this couple of drafts to David Zaslav first, and they've gone back and forth. So what we're probably getting is after all that. So um, I do think yeah, Monday or Tuesday he'll release something. I just hope it's something. I just want to get on the air and, and talk about like I said, talk about being blown away by something to the point where that is a conversation, you know, and, and, and like I said, it's a lot of pressure to put on him, but you took the job, man. GL is the best way to bring the cosmic. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, cosmic side to DC. It is definitely Matt Reeves said, uh, he's fine. What would they do with the Batman after his trilogy is over? Yeah, but that, that's it. After his trilogy is over, you're talking about, First of all, Pattinson has to be okay with it. He may not want to play a superhero after that. We're we're trying to tell the future now that's not here. Also, you're talking that's a long time. We're not even getting Batman, the Batman 2. If he if they're if they're right now they're writing a script for it. We're not in pre-production. So you gotta finish the script. All right. 
you got it. You got to cast your villains and do all that. You have to go into what's called pre-production. That's months a months long process. And then you have to go into principal photography. And then you have to go into post-production. Right now, we are in January of 2023. What I just told you, most of that is a year long process. So you're talking about post-production, which is another four or five, six month process. So you're talking about late 2025, possibly 2026 before we get the Batman. All right. So, and a third one would probably be no less than two years behind that. So we're talking about 2028. We're talking about five years from now, dude. Minimum. Uh, who knows where we'll be in any of this? And if Pattinson will want to play. Most of these guys who do these trilogies like this, a lot of times they move on. Pattinson does other stuff. What Matt Reeves want to do, you know, like I said, if it's not Matt Reeves handling this version of Batman, will it even be worth doing it again? So there's a lot in that that uh, mix that you'd have to consider. And plus it's five years away. So, I mean, Batman should never have been bought into the fold like uh, – like the JL, he's a uh, best of street level in Lonnie, but he's founding member of the JL. I mean, he brings brevity. To, he he brings a, a a level of sanity to what is a wild collection of people. So I think Batman. I personally think Batman's a perfect fit. Now in his own comic, yeah, he can be street level, but when he's one of the most notable superheroes in the world, he's got to be hanging with you know the most the rest of the most notable ones. Never heard about that interview. I'm doing good. Been helping a friend move in a new place after getting a divorce. Ooh. Well, at least they're moving on. Are you a hereditary movie fan? Yes. I really don't understand the hype that that movie. I feel like I'm in a minority. I I I actually enjoy those movies. They're brutal, man. I mean, some of the some of the things that happen in hereditary stick with you. It's it's not it's not for the faint of heart. William, yeah, even more iconic than Heath Ledger's performance is the Joker's Val Kimmer's Doc Holliday and Tombstone. That's an underrated performance. Every line is memorable. Uh, he wasn't even nominated for an Oscar. But yeah, I remember, I remember you bringing this up before, but remember he was that year that he would have been, uh, that you would want to be nominated? It, there's nobody you could have put out that year. I mean, everybody in that, 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 that was 1995. I think you just weren't going to be able to. That was just one of those years where there was like five excellent historic performances. And you had Tom Hanks winning two of them there. So yeah, I'm not knocking um Kimmel's performance, but it was just one of those years, man. All right, we're at 54 minutes. Man, I hate uh Sony String will hold on that tin pole of fake MCU. Um Here's the thing, though. I don't mind them having a, a string hold on it because, to be honest with you, I call MCU the Marvel Clutterverse because there's too many too many characters in it and not every character fits in it. I am not a fan of Tom Holland's Spider-Man up till No Way Home. I'm a fan of him playing the character, but I don't like the way he was written. Spider-Man never needed Iron Man for jack shit. Spider-Man didn't need the Avengers. Spider-Man was in Marvel Comics for eight years before he ever he even went into outer space. Spider-Man was the guy who came to your books to help your sales. Spider-Man is the symbol of Marvel Comics. Mr. Stark, Mr. Stark, oh, don't take the costume from me. What the fuck? All right, Spider-Man was subservient to no one. He got advice from Reed Richards because he, he was friends with Johnny Storm, but he was that was the appeal of of Spider-Man, it was what he could he was in every team. Every team was going through the same thing Spider-Man was going through, and a lot of teams had to deal with them on their own. Had to go to the Avengers for anything. He, he was a boy genius. He made his own webbing, he made his own costume. He was he solved his own problems, you know. Uh, and, and I just didn't like the way he's portrayed. And like I said, there's a lot, and we got a bad habit when it comes to Marvel thinking everything belongs in the MCU. It's like you go through your refrigerator and you open your, you want to make a salad, but you don't know what the fuck you're doing. So you just want to throw everything in your, in your refrigerator, in your cupboards, in a salad. Those things may taste great on their own, but you just throw them into a big bowl, a bowl, uh, and put, put some dressing on it and it tastes like shit. All right. And that's what the Marvel Cinematic Universe is to me sometimes. Um, you just get too bogged down with too many characters, not enough time to tell proper stories, and that's what it is. So, no, I am happy that somebody else uh, runs Sony because, to be honest with you, all my favorite Spider-Man movies were made by Sony. 
Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was made by Sony, won two Academy Awards. Spider-Man 2 is one of the great superhero sequels of all time. I enjoyed Amazing Spider-Man. I did not did enjoy Amazing Spider-Man 2, but Amazing uh, but uh, Spider-Man 2002 and um uh, uh, Spider-Man 2 were were all Sony movies. So it's not like Sony can't make Spider-Man movies. So I, I, you know, like I said, and, and now I got to the point with No Way Home where Spider-Man was where I thought he should be, I should have been years ago, but, uh, you know, it took the long way around. But no, if they ever do Miles Morales, I, I don't want to see him as a, some sidekick, you know, to, to a much larger Avenger story. Spider-Man wasn't even an Avenger until the, the, the mid-2000s. They, Stan Lee never wanted Spider-Man as part of a superhero team. You know, if you notice, it didn't happen till later on. It didn't, it, it, it you know, he, he would guest appear, but he was never an actual member of a team. And they, they, they never wanted him to be that way. So, yeah, I, I want Sony to maintain that stranglehold because, like I said, if you, if, I, I, I think they make the best Spider Man stories, they made the best Miles Morales story. You know, I, I don't think they'll have any problem making money with a, with a cost of Spider Verse. So, if they, they're the ones that have cultivated that character. They're the ones that have built that character up to what it is. Any popularity that character has has come from what Sony has done. So I would, why, why would you turn that over to someone else? With Spider-Man, it's different because you can make a case that it was waning after Amazing Spider-Man. But with Miles Morales, there's been no such, you know, no such situation. So that's just my opinion. Dark Scipio, Val Kilmer was great in Tombstone. Yes, he was. I agree. Uh, there's a screaming baby going around my house. It's kind of like the Bear Witch Project. It's pretty scary. You need to move. Uh, I need to see Jethro Fly's absent already. Yeah, who knows? I think if, if you get a Ben Affleck movie, you may. He's already there. Eat my tacos. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, do be careful, Chappie. Yeah. William, will Gunn stay after his four-year contract is done? Uh, he's pushing 60 and WB might sell by that time. Would he, um, very possible. I'm not saying that tab, but well, you know, if if he if he goes blockbuster and does great in his four years, even even if it's sold, the new owners will, will not want to disrupt that. Uh, a lot of it is going to be determined how what would first of all, what is success? Are we going to do some Kevin Tishihara, um, Jeff Johns, Walter Amata bullshit where oh 600, 700 million is not enough? Let's put the screws to it. Are we are we going to look at success as are we having positive momentum going forward? So if Superman comes out and it doesn't make a billion dollars, are these guys going to shit in their diapers? Or is success, okay, 600 million, 700 million, great. Um, fan base is feeling great. We think we can build on this. So it all depends on what success is and who is the, you know, who's the judge of that success? You know, remember we have shareholders that are involved. We're not going to get the Batman two to twenty twenty four yet. That if you get Batman two in twenty twenty four, that's a fucking miracle. Because like I said, he's not even done with the script yet. And after the script, you have to cast other people because obviously you have your main principles. But there's who's the villain? I mean, we don't know. Nah, WC, uh, WCW who forty and said WB is probably not not going to sell anytime soon because everybody who would be wanting to buy them already has everything that WB would have to offer in my opinion. Plus you can't they can't sell for another two years anyway because of the merger. Mary Walker Comcast said they'd be open to buying another studio if it makes sense. That one wouldn't make sense. That that one would for for Universal wouldn't make sense because they already have Universal. <clears throat> I don't I just don't see the value <clears throat> especially now by the time W um BD would be up for sale. They're probably will just come out of their debt, and so I don't. And you're just going to be adding more debt. You're just buying, buying. It would just be dead weight. Could happen, but I don't think so. William Powell, don't forget to, uh, to store my my stuff uh, on the corner. So when you get the UPS thing straightened out, um, I can pay for the postage. Yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah, my stuff. Yeah, <laughs> get my stuff. Did you're already claiming my shit? What the hell? We're still doing a promotion. Calm down, Darth. Well, you remember when everyone thought Blair Witch Project was real? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I won money on that, by the way. I won money from a co-worker. Fucking dummy. That's real, man. It's real. It's not. You guys are, you don't know what you're talking about, man. I'm like, dude, they're on CNN being interviewed right now. Give me my $20. 
all those people that you said were missing, they're on scene. So would it, would the Blair Witch let them out for interviews and, 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 and tell them to come back when they're done? I couldn't believe people thought that was real. I really, it's real foul footage. The dude, the direct, everybody who was involved with the movie was saying it wasn't on TV. They're on the red carpet for Blair Witch Project. So what the Blair Witch was waiting in the limo saying, as soon as you're done, you get back in here. We got to go back to the woods. <laughs> Come on. Oh, my goodness. William Batman Begins has some insane lines like, it's black. It's a black tank and so many good moments. Music is great to everything works. Real are fun. I, to each his own. To each his own. Like I said, you are not wrong for loving Batman Begins. I think it's overrated. I think it's I, the pacing of it is bad. Uh, I just, I just how I feel about it. But like I said, I'm not going to knock anybody for liking it. Oh, uh, William, uh, in my theater audience were confused. They thought Batman was a DCU. Whose fault is that? The uh, studio. If your audience is confused, then the movie makers and the studios have failed. Period. That's why when people tell me, well, they can't have this many Batman or Superman because it will be too confusing for the audience. Yeah, if you're a fucking moron, it'll be confusing. There's two things that cause confusion. Stupid people and idiots who can't explain things to people. All right. Now, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt that our audiences, because I'm part of it, are not a bunch of dummies. So that leaves me with people who can't do their job and explain things. When you are a studio, when you are presenting something for public consumption, it is your job to make sure that your audience gets it. Marvel Studios is about to introduce Kang, like I've said over and over again, on his face value alone is more confusing than anything DC has ever done or will ever do. But they're going to make that work. All right. On the heels of that, they're going to make Secret Wars, which is literally designed to be a clusterfuck. They're going to make that work. Why? Because it's their job to make it work. It is their job as a presenter to present in a way that the people at the presentation understand it. If your audience is confused, you have failed. You do not need to have your job. If you think your audience is going uh, is to be confused, you need to resign because that means you're too stupid to craft a presentation to get your audience on board with you. So it is the studio's fault for that. The marketing for that movie was genius. Uh, yeah, it was. That was right up when the internet was really starting to pick up. All right, we're at 105. So let's, it's 12.35 right now. So we'll keep it going till my sinuses start to jam up. I believe that I saw Rebel Moon was going to be released in theaters too. Do you think it'll have a, uh, you have a promo viewing? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Netflix usually doesn't do those. When they release things in the theaters, it's usually so that I can get, you know, any type of awards, something like that, because that's just not where Netflix makes their money. I don't know enough about it, though. I know Army of the Dark, Army of the Dead, they did one. I didn't, wasn't able to make it to, but we did promote uh, Army of the Dead. Uh, we have stuff at the store still for it. Uh, 50 50. Even after No Way Home, I still don't like Tom Holland's Spider Man, but that's more of the fault of the writing. Yeah, he, they got him to in Nowhere Home to where I've always wanted him to be. They basically undid the Spider Man Jr. story arc. I feel I, I like better Spider Man 3 better than Tom Holland Spider Man movies. This, the Holland movies are fun. It's just like, like okay, even in uh, Far From Home, Tony Stark is dead, and yet he's finding a way into your movie. You're moving upstage by a dead guy's glasses. Do I need that Spider Man being that? No. In my opinion. Yeah, but Venom, I hate Venom. I have the same feeling about Venom and Deadpool at all in the same category for me. I know Venom was creative at one point. when I, I remember his first appearance. I was buying Spider-Man, uh, his first appearance in, in Spider-Man 298. He actually made a cameo in Web of Spider-Man uh, 18 where he's just his hands pushing Spider-Man into a train. Um, Venom has been the over, most overused character on every medium ever. He's overused in the comics. He's oversaturated in the comics. Carnage, the entire Venom family, which, which 
what once was a great uh, creative idea was driven into the fucking ground to the point where I hate that character. I hate Lobo for the same reason. During the 90s, they tried to make Lobo this and that. Deadpool, I didn't like Deadpool from the first day I saw him because I thought he was just another carbon copy mercenary. And that's what he ended up being. And then people took him in a different direction. But I, it's just, just these characters like this, they're, they're fan favorites, but they're not good narrative characters for me. For who I what I want in superhero movies. Hey Larry, I've been trying some super chats uh, to William at Midnight's Edge over after dark, but my PayPal credit won't let me. What am I doing wrong? Um, that I don't know. Um, I don't know how Enosh has the super chat set up. I don't have super chats on my network because I don't have that many viewers yet. But I, I, I don't. I'd have to ask Enosh that question. Too many reboots too quickly. Boss Venom Origins, yeah, yeah, and it's just, just he's just really an overused character. I like Spider Man Three. Let's see, Dark Sepia. Let's just weird. Sometimes I try it and it does work, and I restart my phone and it does. Okay. Um, I don't agree with it, but I am. Um, listen, I, people, I I hate when people say it. And I'm not saying you're saying this, Mister Fahrenheit. When people say that, um you know, actors and athletes should just do their thing. I'm like, nah, actors, acts, athletes, and, and everybody else, famous people, they're all taxpaying American citizens. They have a right to their opinion. They can deal with the consequences of those opinions as well, just like we all can. But, you know, him having an opinion, I disagree with his opinion, um, but he has a right to have it. I don't think, uh, you know, as long as he continues to do his job on the screen, I don't. I, I in a perfect world, his his opinion wouldn't, um, well, shouldn't affect that, you know. Uh, but I'm gonna cut the guy some slack because I know he just lost his father a few days ago. So I, I I'm not gonna target Zachary Levi today. But whenever it comes to vaccine tweets and like that, listen, I go where the science tells me when it comes to that. So I just leave it there. So eat my tacos. I really don't like Spider-Man. Yeah, nobody really does. All right, uh, we are seeing WWE headed to a with the sell off. Um, yeah, I haven't heard a lot of news lately on it, but yeah, he's definitely trying to sell it. It was more about the company in general, not specifically about Vexus. All right, great. No Batman or Superman until 2025, 26. So, we're uh, so what is there to blow our socks off then? You could still announce a plan. And with, here's another thing on well, my wish list or my question list. How, what are we doing with these remaining movies that you have left before your era begins? I know that they've worked on some of these movies and done some things. Have they done things to the point where we're not just sitting around in our hands running out the clock with these movies? Like, that's going to be an interesting question I would like to have answered. Shades of Cannibal Holocaust controversy. Oh, okay. Yeah. No more Jokers, uh, man, unless William Defoe is under the Joker or I'm all Jokered out. I think there needs to be a spot, but you know what? It's it's a, it's a very attractive role, and the last two guys that have played it have won Academy Awards, so it's really tough to say no. Yeah, like I said, uh, it's it's that's his opinion. They got one shot of getting Doctor Doom right, or I'm out. I think they'll take their time. Uh, let's see. I'm actually looking forward to Joker too. I love Joaquin Phoenix. William, there was a new epic Ant-Man trailer where King says he's killed Ant-Man at the time. Yeah, yeah. If you read King, especially some of his later stories in the mid '90s, um, and King has his face so you know in universes that don't even exist anymore. He's faced Kings and he or he's faced Avengers, and he's always had the advantage of having faced a different version or a younger version or an older version. So he has a distinct advantage of knowing how to beat certain characters because he's faced them before. Or he, he know, you know, he before they even know who he is, he has to jump on him because he's a time traveler. All right, I'm looking forward to Joker sequel. Curious if they'll involve Bruce and Alfred again. I mentioned him. I hope not because it just doesn't line up. Just saw last was a good episode. Yeah, I got to get back to that here in a few minutes. William, why couldn't they use Wakanda Tech or, or Doctor Strange Magic to cure um, Jane's cancer? MCU has a lot of plot holes. You answered it <laughs> right there. Uh, it was a plot line that if they took away that plot line, it would have killed their story. Uh, episode three was surprising. Tony Jones is still good, so I'm going to watch that. 
Yeah, I've always felt that way about the Marlins. That's why I call it the clutterverse. When you, once you, something gets too big, too bloated sometimes, that's that's what happens. That's a byproduct. Tom Holland, the spider boy, he acts like a 14-year-old even with Captain America Civil War so quick. Yeah, and then he was talking and annoying people. He does talk, you know, even in the comics, but, he, you know, he's not that annoying like that. I can't wait for all these superhero movies to get rebooted and audience say, finally, these characters are being decorated. They'll never say that, dude. You're trolling me. They'll never say that. Chances uh, that Marvel will botch Doom. Oh, I don't think so. I think they'll do a good job with Doom. I mean, they've done a good... It, dude, look what they've done with Kang. Kang is a much more... A, a far more complicated character than... uh, And it looks like they've nailed Doom, or nailed Kang so far, so... uh, He's talking about vaccines. All right, let's see. We're moving quickly. You applied the tweet about Flagler being, uh, being a dancer or being a cancer. Danger. Okay. What movie do you think uh, this year will make one billion? Oof. I don't know. I think they're all going to make great movies. I don't think Dune's going to make a billion because I think it's still an abstract. Uh, I don't think The Flash is going to make a billion. The Flash could make a billion. Uh, I don't think so. I think Aquaman is going to make really good money. Um, I don't think it's going to make a billion. I think there's a Mission Impossible movie that might make a billion off the hills of Top Gun, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know if any of them will. I think a lot of them will, will approach it, but I, I mean, it's hard to tell because you don't know what's going to be released where. I mean, China could make a difference, you know, uh, and, and, and some of these. Sometimes the science is biased. I trust my gut when it comes to... Uh, and live with the consequences. You see me, I like I said, I figure I'm I'm dumber than scientists, so I'm just gonna leave it to them. Uh let's see. It's good to see that Superman is gonna be the main priority of this James Gunn and Peter. Said. Yes, that is so important. That is that is key, you know. And I and I know Zaslov even before he hired Gunn made that a priority. And you have to, you just have to. All right, man. I watched eleven hours of Yellowstone. I feel like a cowboy. Best show hands down for me. Uh oh. How can you do Secret Wars with Kang as an Beyonder? Well, they don't, you know, comic book movies, when they, they do their own narratives. It's like Civil War wasn't really Civil War like that, but, you know, they may, I don't know if they'll bring in the Beyonder. The Beyonder was a hard character to bring in. I don't think you could bring in a character like that. Um, I think, I don't, I, comic book wise, because, you know, I think he reads well in comics. I don't think Beyonder, uh, I don't know how they would do that, but, yeah, um, I don't think Kang is the protagonist in Secret Wars. I think Kang is a protagonist in Kang Dynasty, but I don't think he's a uh, the Secret Wars villain. All right, let's see. I hope we do two trailer releases. Uh, they use the lap song or Jesus Christ. Uh, let's see. Protest Guardian Stream might be able to knock out a uh, Bill. Neither the first two did, but. Be- like I said, it's really hard to say which one can't or can't. It could. I don't care. I don't know. Marvel uh, severely nerfs. Um, Thanos is like 10% power. Hulk is a lightweight. And Zemo is a clown so far. Well, and they made Thanos, or Thanos a genius. They made him some genius that could wipe out half the you know, life. Thanos is a fucking moron. William, I thought Joker 2 was supposed to be a musical. Was that just a rumor? Um, it possibly is. I think there's going to be musical elements in it, but I don't know if it's going to be a full-blown mu- musical. All right, no version of Secret Wars uh, uh, without Beyonder. Uh, give them, let's let's see how what they roll out first. I mean, I, I, Secret Wars in general, it's you know, especially the last Secret Wars that they did in 2016. I mean, it was based on other things, so they could pro- they could pull it off. I'd have to see it first before I where I knocked it though. Anyone excited for Creed three? I am. I like Michael B. Jordan, and it looked I saw in the trailers, and it looks uh, looks compelling. All right, he's pivotal. Yeah, he's pivotal in both of the comic book versions. But like I said, the name Secret Wars and the story Secret Wars, we're, we're not writing a comic or writing a movie. So it, it just depends on where they're at um, when this movie was released. I don't know, but the Hulk has not been enjoyable in the last couple of appearances, especially uh, in Infinity War and Infinity, Infinity uh, and uh, Endgame. So. I, it would have been cool to see Nick Fury's Secret War. We don't, like I said, I, I haven't seen the script, so we, we really don't know. Um, it's, it's Secret Wars is like a thousand years away. That's, you know, 
All right, guys, that is it. Um, I was only supposed to go 45 minutes. I went an hour and 16. Uh, so I've been a bad boy tonight. But like I said, I'm going to go back to watching The Last of Us, and then I'll, um, I'll give a review tomorrow. But, yeah, by this time tomorrow, we may have a partially leaked. I mean, depending on how they release this, if there is a president event, you know, it's going to get leaked uh to the to the general public and then i guess he's going to be presenting it to us on the 31st one way or another so um if he just does it with the trades i'll probably ignore most of it because the trades twist shit i'm not saying that they're lying but they tell you what they want you to hear uh to keep keep you coming back like crack like oh give me some more info give me some more info and the same thing with scoopers and all that it's just it's just a constant um circle jerk but um, I'm waiting for him to address us on Tuesday, one way or another. And then, like I said, we'll go from there. And hopefully, the next time I talk to you and bring up the words James Gunn, Saffron, or WBD, we're talking about anticipation in the most positive way possible. I just want to have fun with this stuff. It hasn't been fun for quite a while. Not because I've made it not fun, but because they, they're just organization and mismanagement the last five to seven years has pretty much taken fun out of the game. And we have an opportunity to for this to be fun. And hopefully uh, he capitalizes on this sooner or later. So I want to be happy. I want to be talking about these characters in the most positive light possible. I think James Gunn has the ability to do this. I think whether he can do it or not is not going to be as relevant as is the infrastructure going to be there for him to do so. Are they destroying so much of the infrastructure that they're hurting themselves? We'll find out Monday and Tuesday. So and until then, guys, I will see you later. Stay safe.